Welcome to Warp Legacy. Just kidding, that was just baking soda and vinegar. Stick around though, because I really am going to give myself a chemical burn to show how dangerous this stuff really is. But first, we got to talk safety. Hold up, before we actually get into that, let's back up and explain why we're actually messing with these chemicals in the first place. Now, if someone tells you they make soap that doesn't have lye in it, they are either lying, don't know what they're talking about, or it's not soap. The definition of soap is on your screen right now, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, and I'm probably not going to leave it up long enough for you to read it either. So, the, the short story is soap is a oil, fatty acid, triglyceride thing, crude representation of a molecule. Okay. And a lye that's reacted. So this is sodium hydroxide. This is the fats and oils that we're doing. Essentially what happens when you mix them together is everything breaks apart. And then these connect to this side. These connect over here. You left with that? I don't know what that is. It's something, but I don't know it or care what it is. So then this is what you're left with. None of this is caustic anymore. None of this is lie anymore. So now it's safe. This I don't know what this is. Um, if you want to know what it is, go look it up somewhere else. It's still in the soap. But this is soap. This is the fatty acid, and this is part of what used to be a lie. I don't remember where it is. But the important part, let me get rid of the rest of these because we only need one, is this part of the molecule mixes with oil, and this part of the molecule mixes with water. So when you wash your hands with soap, that's what's happening, is this is connecting to all the oil and making like a little ball around the oil. And then you rinse it off with water and the water connects to this part and washes it away. You can't make soap without lye. And now, back to safety. Gloves. Lose them. First off, these are the wrong kind of gloves. These are leather gloves, so if I got lye on them, it'd just soak through the leather and get to my hand anyways. But, if you have the right kind of gloves, they're not necessarily bad. The problem is, if you get the lye inside the glove, the glove will hold the lye against your skin, and you could potentially get a worse burn than if you, than if you didn't have any gloves. So, if you're going to wear gloves, make sure they're gloves you can get off easily. Big ol' ugly eye protection! These better stay in place. While it is possible to get this stuff in your eye and not lose your eye, it is a possibility. Dad got this stuff in his eye one time. Thankfully, he had a rinse station real close and got it rinsed quick. He still looked like he lost a bad fist fight, though. While this stuff will burn any skin, it will react faster and stronger to sensitive areas. Eyes, nose, mouth, other sensitive areas. Tip of the day, don't make soap when you're naked. Now, these are just some uh, motorcycle glasses that I have that fit over my regular glasses, but you're gonna want something that has a bit of a seal against your skin up here, because what you're trying to prevent is splashing into your eyes, because you don't want to lose them. Now, what I consider to be the most important piece of safety equipment for this process, running water. The reason for that is if you do get lie on you, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the sink, turn on the cool water, and wash it off. Now, you might be saying, but Fight Club told me to put vinegar on it and water wouldn't help. That's not true. The water will rinse it off and act as a slight acid and neutralize as it rinses. The problem with using vinegar is because it is an acid and the lye is a base, they will react and neutralize each other. But that reaction creates heat and has the potential to give you a 
thermal burn instead of just a chemical burn. Now, because of reasons, I have access to liquid solutions of sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is used to make bar soap, potassium hydroxide is used to make liquid soap. After the reaction, this soap is softer and this soap is harder. The problem is, every recipe for soap that I have found uses dry sodium hydroxide or dry potassium hydroxide measured by weight. So how am I going to use the liquid? It's actually pretty simple. This is a 50% solution of sodium hydroxide by weight. So if I have two ounces by weight of this stuff, it's going to be one ounce of water and one ounce of sodium hydroxide. So however much sodium hydroxide it calls for, I just double this and then take half of it away from the water I'm supposed to add. This one is 45%. The math isn't as straightforward, but it's the same principle. Now, you gotta make sure you store this stuff in the right containers. If you put it in the wrong containers, it will eat through the container. Now, you really wanna put this stuff in some kind of plastic, but not all plastics will work. Pop bottle, not good. It's PET. This stuff will eat through PET. In the right conditions, this stuff will eat through glass. High density polyethylene. That's good stuff to hold this. Now, on to the part that you're probably actually here for. I'm gonna give myself a chemical burn. Now, I'm not trying to say this stuff is not dangerous, because you can get very bad burns from this stuff. But, the way people talk about it is sometimes so outlandish that they make it sound like if the drop ever touches your arm, you're gonna lose your arm. That's not gonna happen. This stuff, this, Sodium hydroxide is one of the most caustic things that can be, if not the most caustic. It, it might actually be the most caustic you can get. I'm not sure. And it will eat through a lot. But the key is it takes time to do it. It's not like you get a drop of this stuff on you and it's just going to eat all the way through to the other side. If you leave it and don't wash it off, it will give you a very, very bad burn. But, if you're close to a water source and you wash it off, it's not going to be that bad. This is just a piece of paper towel that I've rolled up to a stick. I'm just going to dip it in here and rub it on my arm. I don't even feel anything right now. It feels like cool water. I'm going to leave it on there for a few seconds because a lot of times people don't even notice that it's there. Rub it in, move it around. There, now I'm starting to feel something. And since I'm starting to feel something, I'm going to go wash it off right now. Right now that area just feels kind of numb. Oh, that water's way too hot. I actually think I washed it off too early to get any sort of burn. So let's do it again. A nice big old drop. And why not? Let's do it in the same spot. It's already... Now, what's happening here is this is actually starting to turn the fats in my skin to soap. That's actually why this is causing a burn. Yeah, that's definitely it. There, it's getting warm. It's actually getting warm and getting so, oh, there we go. That spot feels super ridiculous clean. Do you see a burn? It was right here that I was putting it on. Do you see a burn? I don't see a burn.
No burn? No burn? Where'd the burn go? Well, I tried to get what was actually there on camera, but I couldn't get any camera to pick it up. There was no red mark. It didn't look like a burn from the outside. When you were just looking at it, it looked like nothing ever happened. But if you felt it, you could feel under the skin, there was like a bump. It wasn't big, like I said, it wasn't big enough to show up on camera, but you could feel it. I'm pretty sure what that was, was a deeper tissue burn. Because I got it all washed off the surface, but later that evening, the day I did it, it felt warm again. It felt kind of like a sunburn. So I went back to the sink and I washed it some more that night. And deep tissue burns are actually something that lye is known for because it can absorb deeper into your tissue and you can just wash it off the top and not get a burn on top, but still get a deeper burn. But even that bump is pretty much gone now. Been like a month or something like that. So the only side effect that I've noticed was the day I did it, it kind of felt like a sunburn and there was a slight bump. And I really didn't have it on my arm that long, and it still got in and gave me a, me a deeper burn. All right, tomorrow we'll be taking all these ingredients we've been talking about and turning them into a bar of soap. Actually, more than one bar of soap. Well, hopefully it'll be tomorrow. If I get it all edited in time, it'll be tomorrow. Thank you for visiting Warped Legacy. If you like this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications for every video I upload. And if you like what we're doing here at Warped Legacy, head on over to our Patreon page and show us some support there. Till next time, I'm Tuan. Go to find your legacy. Now, pretty much every recipe I have found for soap measures out the lie in... Really? Every time I talk to the camera, the dog runs away and goes into his crate. Okay.